All right, it looks like we're uh, on the air. What's up? <laughs> it is time to have a little fun. It is finally Thursday. Thirsty Thursday is what I like to call it. And uh, we'll have a, a good time, hopefully. I've been working on the, uh, the shrine and working on my spring bank and my Talisker collection, uh, Slay with Shirley. So that will be good. Um, Going to look at a couple new ones today. Well, one a new one and one not so new, but old enough to, to do a proper review, I think, going and uh, see what we get. And uh, first thing we're going to look at is the Spring Bank, which you all know is Campbelltown, um, the 15. And I've not had it before. Uh, this bottle, I had had a sip or two already uh, and I'm kind of glad I did, because I will get into that in a second. My first impression was a little little off, I think. And I think once I reapproach this, it's going to be a better experience. Maybe it was after some oxidation, too. We'll see. And then the Talisker 18, which is a, a great bottle. Um, love the 10. 10 is, is, should be on every bar, I think. It's uh, top of the line, even though it's a younger whiskey. Comparatively to a lot of 12s, 18s, 21s, but Tosca 10 is really good. Now, this one's really good, even better, um, and we'll get into that. I've, I have had the 18 of, was one of the very first uh, older whiskeys, I would consider older being over 15 years, uh, that I ever tried, and I don't think I was quite ready for it. The first time I had the 18, I was more into like a lot of the 10 year old things, a lot of NASs. Um, and I don't think my palate was mature enough really to appreciate all the things you can get out of an 18 year old scotch, especially as a good of a, a brand as Talisker is. So that's a, a big uh, plus. Anyway, um, and Talisker is Islands. Then it's not Isla. It's not uh, Highlands. It's it's I Islands. It's its own little group of islands like uh, Isle of Skye. Um, there's the Isle of Iran, I think is how you say it, A-R-R-A-N, Iran, or Iran probably. Um, other islands, groups out there, but um, Talisker is uh, kind of a hybrid, what I consider like a Isla, but not quite, kind of like a Camel Town, but not quite. It's It sits like in its own realm. A uh, little bit of peat, but heavier on the peat than most other uh, like highlands and space sides and stuff. But um, still uh, a lot of good pepper, you know, it's white pepper, black pepper, that kind of thing. And we'll have uh, fun with that. And thanks so much for stopping by, guys. I appreciate it. Um, I think the Scotch for Dummies were running over because they uh, uh, had some technical difficulties trying to get Rob on the show. Uh, we were all going to do a chat at some point, but I guess it didn't uh, didn't happen. So I did end up chatting with uh, Everwind. Uh, hey, thanks. Uh, stream just ended. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, the uh, I wasn't sure uh, if they were going to go over or not, and I thought, well, I'll just you know, I'll just ramble a little bit. That's what I'm good at, and uh, make it to when people can uh, come by. Hey, Lot Ness, good to see you, man. And and Bob H, good to see you. I don't know if you've been here before, Bob, but uh, you're always welcome. And Travis, uh, yeah, we're going to take a look at the Campbelltown and the Islands uh, tonight. And I've heard great things about this guy, and I've had a very immature experience with this guy. So I think, uh, like I said earlier, we're going to approach this uh, with a more mature palate. And I think I'll appreciate the Talisker 18 even more. It wasn't that I disliked it. I don't, I think the, the floral and the herbal notes threw me off my, my game when I first tr tried to tackle it. And as you can see on the old uh, shrine back here, spring bank is no, uh, is a, uh, What's the word for it? Uh, no stranger <laughs> to Mr. Telex. We've got a history from the 10, 12 castrings, 12 burgundy, 13 green, 14 bourbon wood. The 15 is what we're going to look at tonight. The 19 port wood, the 10 local barley, and even a hazel broom wasn't quite my thing. It's a burlow cast, nine year, but you know, it, it wasn't bad. It's just, I think I appreciate the spring bank, uh, range better uh i haven't had a long row yet that's next on my tackle list we're gonna take a look at uh some long rows hopefully get some heavily peated stuff and uh i just don't 
think um, we can go wrong. Lotna says he can't get Spring Bank on Ontario. That sucks, man. I can't. That's hard to believe. Hasn't uh, Rob from um, Whiskey in the Six? Hasn't he got some uh, Spring Bank out there? Or has he ever done any Spring Bank reviews? He might be able to give you um, um, some Intel recon help to maybe get your hands on some spring bank other than ordering it. I think he does do a lot of online ordering, um, which I know with shipping and I'm, I'm sure they've got like, uh, you know, what's the word for it? Uh, customs charges out the yin yang, but hopefully you can, uh, get some, some juice, uh, out there. Hey, Peter. Well, welcome. Definitely. Yeah. The, the Hazelburn Perlo was disappointing yeah, a little bit. Um, not, I don't know. I don't know if it was just, that particular hazel burn wasn't that good or if all hazel burns you know are like that if uh peter do you think the hazel burn is is got better offerings than that burl cask um i mean it wasn't horrible it just was it was like a three three and a half star whiskey it wasn't like a four or a five which you know spring bank and talisker usually gives out really good stuff and i am no no stranger to talisker either we've got the the Stiller's edition the 10 I have had, um, what was it called? It wasn't the niche point. I'm waiting on that one. The 57 degrees north I have reviewed with a, a friend, Paul and uh, Lee. And it was, it was good. It was, it was good. It was, uh, might've been one of the travel retails. I can't remember if the 57 degrees north is a travel retail or not. The niche point, which I should be getting here before long. Um, I th I'm pretty sure that is a travel retail, but, uh, the only one, uh, Talos graph had that kind of, wasn't up to snuff uh, as my expression I would use was the port re is how you pronounce it port re it's port uh, r u i g h e it was um a decent nose and taste the finish just wasn't there for me um which is important to me it, it, I have to have all three I have to have a good nose I have to have a great palate and I have to have a decent finish if I don't have my finish I'm not going to be happy because to me the scotch experience the finish is, is just as important, you know, as the nose or the, or the palate. And some guys get into the dry glass nose, which I've kind of dabbled in a little bit. And it's interesting how you do get a completely different nose at the end of a dry glass. Um, I haven't got that deep into reviews yet. Maybe once I kind of tackle more and I swing back around, maybe I'll throw a dry glass uh, nose in the end. I'm sure some of you guys already do that kind of thing. Um, hey, Rob, Whiskey in the Six, good, thanks for joining me here. And Daniel, uh, Whiskey Throttle, I think, is somewhere on there, perhaps. Moose, of course. And uh, looks like uh, everybody is, is ready. So let's take a look. Uh, courtesy of the Scotch for Dummies, I got a couple other coins. You can't go wrong with the Scotch War. That's my... That's one of my uh, favorites. <laughs> I'll do the Mark Broda patented uh, snifferoo here in a second. And uh, one of my other favorites is the Wheelhouse uh, from Andrew. That's a good one, too. Um, now I do have the other two here. I'm only doing two glasses right now, so we don't get to use these guys yet. But um, I'm so glad you guys did these. I love these these, uh, these hats. And the Scotch uh, Test them used to have uh, a few casks as well. I've got three casks. Even got one signed by them when I won a contest when I first uh, did this, the 12 hours of boom back in the day. That was fun. Um, and I'll be looking forward to their cask four at some point. And I'm sure the Scotch uh, four dummies will probably release a set. I think a couple other guys in the whiskey tube, uh, tubers, uh, society has, uh, are doing some coins. So keep your eyes out on all your subscriptions, all the guys, uh, and I might even do a set myself at some point. Uh, I'm not sure logistically how that's going to work, but we'll see. Anyway, let's get to the whiskey, the good stuff. Now, we're going to start. I was debating, you know, which to start because they're not really aggressive Ardbeg Lafroy kind of peat offerings. There probably is a little more peat maybe in the Talisker only because with the spring bank, uh, from what I was reading earlier, and my good friend Everwin, um, I think it was Everwin. It might have been Corey. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Dram Dude out in California. Let me know that it's 100% X Sherry, which is a huge difference from the even the basic 10, because I thought at first that the 15 was almost just a five year older Spring Bank 10, but it's not the case. The 10 is a bourbon sherry blend, you know, mix 
the spring bank is 15 is completely all sherry based um no bourbon so it's gonna be interesting to see if i can dig that out i didn't get that the first time i tasted it but as we all know unless you get down to the magic shoulder level you don't really get a lot of things that you're looking for some of the time um the funny thing is there's another bottle that was like that recently i i, I did a review of the deanston uh 18 and when i was up you know if it starts out around here if you're lucky <laughs> and it comes down and you know once you get that first you know few drams it's kind of like you might be digging for something that you, you're expecting you're not getting. And once you get past that magic shoulder level, and I think Aqua Vitae was the one that was talking about that. I can't remember if that was him. I think it was him. Um, but uh, I think that uh, he was the one that talking about the Deanstons that once you get past that shoulder level, you really get more of a good flavor of balance. It just needs a little air and some time. So hopefully this will help this uh, particular sherry out as well. So anyway um like i said uh this is uh if you know spring bank you know they have a leathery goodness to their drams they got a little sulfur going on they had that dunnage warehouse thing um they do all their own floor malting on on their own or bottling all the things are in-house i really respect that you don't get a lot of frills like you know some people might look at this box and think you know they don't really spend a whole lot of marketing but you know what I don't give a you know what because it's what's inside that counts it's it's this is uh good enough you know what it is you know who it's from it's a nice font you know what the age is you know where it comes from in camp you know camel town and you, you know how much abv is that's 46. you know you you don't really need any other fancy etchings or sculptures or any of that crazy stuff so because if you're going to charge me $300 for a bottle of that, I'm going to stick with, you know, the 130 ish uh, for just a decent, you know, aged bottle. That's just me. So, oh, it makes a difference. It does make a difference. The sherry is the number one note now. Before, I think the leather, you know, Dunnage Warehouse thing was really, the sulfur was was kicking in heavier than I expected it to on, a, on a, this age. Now, once it's aired a bit, I think it, it's already becoming a better, uh, a better bottle. Really nice spice. Um, I get like a, a sweet spice blend off the nose. The first notes I'm getting is like a cinnamon with um, some really sweet fruit, red, red fruit. Like, you know, raspberry, strawberry, medium mixed berries, maybe some blueberry in there too. I mean, definitely get the leather done as stuff, but it's not near as, um, as profound as on the 10. The cool thing about the 15, I think, is that the age definitely makes a difference with the, the type of warehouse goodness you get you get more of that attic uh, antique kind of feel to it hmm it's a little hot though in the nose it's not a i mean i shouldn't say hot i should say it's not tame which is good to me you know i don't want it to be a, a real thin nose hey brolic uh is it brolic or brolic I'm gonna say Brolic unless you correct me. <laughs> Good, to, thanks for stopping by, man. Um, looks like uh, Bob H has got the 18 on his shelf. Haven't had it yet. Come on down, yeah. You should uh, pop that sucker open, man. It's gonna be good when I open this up. I guarantee you. Um, likes the 12 and the rest. I think it's Travis is talking about the Spring Bank. Uh, 12 is damn good cast strength uh, they had a shortage and they are doing a re-release now so if you have had a problem finding the 12 cast strength don't fret because they have a new batch coming out just as they did with the uh, the port uh, I'm sorry the uh, 14 uh, bourbon wood from spring bank is also a new batch of that as I, I had a hell of a time finding it at first and then finally they did a re-release and uh, I found it was really good 
uh, let's see, Hoagie's saying that uh, he never recognized all the sherry maturation of the 15 either. Not first fill, that's for sure. No, it's just uh, X sherry, 100% X sherry. Um, it's, it's, I think the oxidation does help though getting it out. Uh, sometimes my problem is I like to go through the whiskey if I like it, and I might not have a chance to let it oxidize as much as I should. That's a good reason to buy two bottles <laughs> if you can afford it. Not me, but uh, that would be awesome. Have one bottle to open and and let you know have a few drams, let it air out a bit, and and another one to uh, you know I don't know drink that too. <laughs> New basement with pool table, football, scotch, and home run. Yeah, that's true, Bob. I'm working on it down here. I've got my dart board up. I've got my scotch, definitely. i got a, a decent setup with uh, surround sound and the, you know, 70-something inch LED and all that stuff. So I'm, 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 I am I'm don't have the foosball, though, or a pool table. That's going to be tough room-wise. I could probably throw one table in here. And make it work. How <laughs> maybe not all Oloroso second or third? Yeah, it doesn't tell me the type of sherry they use in this. If it's Oloroso, it's I don't think it's PX by any means. It's probably some sort of uh, low and um, just uh, it's not. I don't think it's. Well, we're gonna see about the dryness. If it's dry, acidic, salty, it's fino, but I don't think so. This is 46 percent, 46 ABV, pretty good ABV. 48 might be a little better, but you know I'm not going to ding them for two percent. Very good palette too. Wow. You even have a little little I would consider white pepper on this guy. Um, it's very effervescent on the um, the front end. Really nice uh, sherry notes too. I do. It does come out. I don't think it comes out initially with the bottle. So if you are a Springbank fan, you decide to take a chance in the fifteen. Don't be overly aggressive on your review of it, or you know, try to take take your time with it. Let it air. Uh, let it sit out for a bit, and um, I think you'll be a little more pressed with it once you do that. Uh, Really nice raisins, almost a um, dark chocolate finish, too. Oh, man. It kind of reminds me um, a, somewhat a bit. I mean, the sherry is not as good quality by any means at all. But it does have a glendronic kind of between a 12 and an 18. Uh, see, I haven't had a revival. i got to get my hands on a revival because this, I think, has that kind of balance quality to it. And I think the age does help that piece of it, but um, that is nice. Uh, probably, you know, because the 18 Lundronic is about, I think, 189. Um, I mean, here in Maryland, at least, it's probably overpriced, but that's just the way it is here. Um, so 130, I think, was this guy. 140. Um, if if there was a revival, Glendronic could probably be about the same price. I think it'd be a good a good shoot off, a, a shootout, head to head kind of a a dram battle. I'd like to to witness myself sometime. Uh, Spring being fifteen and like a Glendronic fifteen, that would be cool. Because um, they both have, you know, Glendronic's got the better sherry, the better, you know that thing going on. But Spring has got the little bit of the funk, it's a little bit of the. Um, of the uh, peat, you know, slight, subtle peat thing going on with it. So, you know, different, but similar enough to, I think, go together well. Let me see. Let's catch up with some comments here. I answered Loch Ness in the ABV of that one. Uh, in this, the uh, Talisker 18, that one's going to be 45.8, so really close, not 46 like this guy but you know pretty damn close they might as well have made it that uh i'm not sure why it's 45.8 on the 18 probably because of the year i know some distilleries like to play around with the numbers like they have a 57 degrees north i think that the abv plays along with uh, the 
the longitude latitude lines somehow it's it's really bizarre sometimes they the way they and like lafroy carriages every year they do like um 57.4 for the 2014 57.5 for the 2015 they'll keep you know ratcheting it up based on years so some of these guys love to play with the numbers seems like uh let me get back to this in these comments um ryan says uh, a lot and that's surprising how silly and sweet salty sorry it's <laughs> almost a silly and sweet salty and sweet got together with the new uh bottle of bourbon yeah we're forester wow I haven't tried that. Uh, Bob H is going to heavy pour the Dronic 18. That sounds damn good. I do like the 18. That's the uh, Allardyce, I believe. Uh, Parliament being 21. Both really good. Brolic says, when you get a chance, check out some of our videos. Our Lugavolin 16 review is a huge eye opener to oxidation and freshly open bottle. Yeah, I, I got the same experience, Brolic. I will check your videos out too, by the way. Um, yeah, if you go straight into a, a Lagavulin 16, it's not that it's bad. It's just that if you've had a bottle that's, you know, half open, you get a pour, it's so much better. It, it's night and day difference to me. The bake, the bacony ham steak dinner finish lasts for two or three hours if you have a really nice, well-opened uh, bottle of that, I think. That's my experience. Uh, how he's telling Travis uh, Faircloth that uh, certainly not that PX by taste, and others like Vino and Pablo Cortado. Bit more exotic. Hmm. I never had that Cortado. That sounds good, though. Sorry, just catching up on some comments. They're flying. I appreciate it, guys. You guys are really uh, going back and forth here. I'm not missing anything in particular. All right. Um, yeah, that was, uh, this is definitely better than my first experience. Because I'll, I'll be honest with you, when I first had the first, you know, one or two drams, I was thinking to myself, wow, I mean, this is like a spring being 10 a lot. I wasn't getting the sherry as much. I wasn't getting um, much other than a typical leathery Dunnage Warehouse bourbony 10, you know, notes. And uh, I'm thank goodness I didn't go ahead and throw a review down because if I did, it would have been not as near as good as it is now. Um, I'm glad I waited. And sometimes waiting definitely does help. Um, and where you get the uh, that pour from in the bottle, I think does make a huge difference. Hmm. This also reminds me a little bit of the Glen Scotia 15. I'm not getting, I do love the on Glen Scotia 15. I love the cola notes you get on it. I don't think you get that as much here, but. And one thing Glen Scotia 15 has got going for it comparatively to the Spring Bank 15 is that price difference is practically half the money. This is good though. Really nicely done uh, finish. The chocolate covered raisin. From, I know that's from the sherry too. Oh my! And it and it gets drier, but it doesn't like dry out too fast, which I really enjoy on that too. And it keeps going for a bit of distance. Um, I'm not sure if I'll say long. Maybe we're getting kind of to medium to long, more of a medium finish, but gives me a, a yearning to try their 18 and 21. <laughs> That's next on my list after, you know, I have had the 19 port. That was good, but uh, I can only imagine what their standard 18 and 21 are gonna be like. That's gotta be magnificent. I know they have a 25, but that's out of the price range right now. Um, Maybe if they hit the lottery or some nice folk out there want to send me a, a pretty decent bottle, <laughs> that would be a hell of a Christmas present. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, Bob's got the 21 uh, Parliament as well. Yeah. I'm also sending a bottle of the 15 Revival. Bob, you bastard. <laughs> that would be awesome. Is that the original 15? I know they're re-releasing the 15 uh, 2019. Um, so I'm assuming that it can't be a new bottle yet because of the um, 
the release and and everyone and I were talking we're nervous about oh Rachel uh, Rachel Berry uh, is the new uh, person that runs uh, she used to be with Bowmore and now she's with uh, Brown and Foreman and Glendronic and we're a little nervous that that she's not gonna mess this up so hopefully um, it works uh, as well as the uh, older 15 but I know it's always hard to uh, you know compare it to something that's nostalgic or has uh, sentimental value to people when they have a really good whiskey and then they try it again a year or two later they'll never probably enjoy it as much but you know we'll see hopefully uh, hopefully we're we're a little too paranoid for our own good. Uh, do you like the 15 better than the 10? I have to say, this is a no, this is a good question, Moose. You've got a perfect question. Let me have one more sip and tell you. <laughs> I'm going to say I do enjoy the 15 more than the 10, but there's a caveat there. Mood definitely depends on when I'm sitting down to have a dram. What am I going to pick? Because um, if you, as you can tell, we're a big Pete fan here too. So, you know, there are favorites that are just Pete forward, like the quarter cask from Lafroig, um, or the uh, the Ardbeg. Um, we'll say the ten is pretty basic Pete forward goodness. You know. You gotta be in the mood for that though. And sometimes I'll have something that's Pete heavy, Pete Ford, and, and this, this isn't doing it for me. And then I'll seek that sherry out. Like when I was warming up earlier, I warmed up with the McAllen edition two, which I only have sadly that much left. It's so damn good. Um, and when I'm in a sherry mood, I'm going for something like that. This is in that wheelhouse the sherry wheelhouse it still has a little bit of pee it still has a little bit of funk you know it's not ben nevis funky but it's funky enough to appreciate um but if you know the 10 is great when you want something a little younger that's a little more nippy a little more energetic and you want a little bourbon in your sherry that's when you go for the 10 if you are in a bourbon -y mood you don't want that nip you don't want you know you want a little more refinement you want a little more indulgence chocolatey goodness then i would go for the 15. um i think this is justified price difference uh 130 is a little heavy it's a little high but you know the 10 is 75 so for five years, that's not out of the question. Oh, I love this one. <laughs> Might as well just let it loose a little bit there because I'm gonna have one more sip and it's gone anyway. <laughs> Let's see. Probably about to dip into a Haitian rum for International Rum Day. Ah, one thing I haven't gotten into really is um, is the uh, rum deal um only one i've had that's probably any any count for rum people is like the el dorado i think it was like a 15 or a 20 something but uh um it was good it's just i don't know enough about the rum to get really into into it yet scotch is my my drink of choice hands down if 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 i'm going to have something it's going to be a scotch it's not going to be a bourbon anything else uh, if I'm mixing vodka is pretty good, but um, this is a neat only zone. Forty-six percent. I'm not going to touch this with water. It would it would just be sacrilegious. I might be able to get some more notes out of it possibly, but to tell you what, I don't really need any more notes that I'm already getting out of this. Um, it's got well, it's well balanced. It does have some like hay and straw, and you know more of the uh, herbal things going on um, subtly it's real subtle but it's uh, it's complex enough to stand on its own without any help uh, 46 percent is perfect um, 50, 48 technically but uh, perfect enough for me to enjoy it on its own no help needed mm. 
I'm so I'm, I'm just amazed at how different it is after sitting out with some air, uh, even in the bottle, decant it. You know, I think that's what I would do if I bought a bottle of this now. I probably pour half of it out into a decanter, set that puppy up to just let it do its thing. I'd also would have this much left in the bottle, kind of pseudo decanting too. So that way I've got two balanced aerated versions of that whiskey. And I think it would let me enjoy it a little more quickly than it would, you know, if I just, you know, whatever. <laughs> Bro, like, still not digging it. What you not digging? The, uh, excuse me, the bourbon quart? Eight. Excuse me. Wow. Um, Bro, like, has got the uh, bourbon quart eight. I think that's the one he's still not digging, but I'll wait till he responds on that one. Let's well, just open a Glen Goin cast drink. It's going to let it sit in the glass a bit. Yeah, hell yeah. And is that an NAS there, a likeness that, uh, Castring Glen Goin. That even if it's NAS, I bet it's still pretty damn good. I'm pretty sure it would be. Um, I have yet to have a Glen Goin I didn't like. I mean, the ten, I'm sure, and and everyone will agree with me. I think he's already. If I think he's still there, he might have taken off. But uh, I think he uh, is not a big fan of the ten because of the thinness, and it's hard to find a decent ten whiskey from anybody. I don't care if it's Glen Grant, Glen Goin. Um, you know, I mean, Ardbeg does a great tin in Lafroy, but it's because I think it's because of the peat. Um, the peat really helps it. If you're going with a sherry or a just a, a cask without the peat for a 10 year old to shine, man, it's hard. Spring Bank can do it, I think, because of the subtle peat slash dunnage warehouse thing. Um, Talisker, I don't know how, I guess it's the same thing as the peat in the. And the other, you know, peppery qualities they are able to get into it. But when you're talking about Glen Morangy, um, you know, some of the, these other tins is just such a letdown, man. Um, but once you for Glen once you get to the twelve is decent. But once you get up to an eighteen, holy moly, it's damn good. Uh, Bobby Asha says it's great for value and only gets better with age. Yeah. Um, the, the 18 is is a bottle that I think everyone should have on their bar. I really do. Um, 21 is, you know, a little pricey. If you can afford it, I would get that. Of course, there's 25. But uh, the 18, it seems like it's the sweet spot for Glen Goyne as far as value versus quality in, you know, in a spectrum. Um, that's what I would go with. Uh, and 18 is, is pretty much... Uh, not Talisker, the 10, I would say, is a little more. Um, we'll get that in a second. Let's get to that, actually. Are we thinking about it? Hell, it's already 1130. So let's. Um, this one I wouldn't even touch with water either. I don't think it's going to need it. Um, 57 degrees, 17.9 north, launched to the 621.5 west. Wow, they, they're, they're pretty technical in their box. I was just kind of glancing at the box and it just popped out at me. Traditionally matured in oak casks. And if I'm not mistaken, this puppy is also both American and European. And I'm correct. Yes. It's American and European oak refill cask. Uh, information courtesy of distiller.com. Check it out when you get a chance. It's actually a really good resource for looking up whiskeys and information on casking and a lot of us do some typed reviews on there as well and they're all free to look at i've done over 180 something i think let me see what number i'm at now just out of curiosity i gotta be really close to 200 193 so like 193 reviews of different stuff up there at distiller.com so check it out when you get a chance those are good guys it's run out of sweden um Mikhail, Mikhail, michael it's probably Mikhail, um, runs a good uh, site, and uh, you can put your own bottles up eventually. I think he's just opening that up uh, from beta test uh, to, like, release candidate level. Um, but if you don't have – if they don't have something that you're looking to review, they'll, they'll easily post it. But they have everything practically up there already. Uh, my last review was an Octomore 7.2, and, and they had it. Before that, the Kalila Mulk. 
and I did a uh, Tumnavulan double cask, a Bindoof Black Mountain, a Glen Grant 10, Glen Elgin 12, Dali Wing 12, uh, Linkwood 23. So, I mean, they've got just about everything you can think of up there. Anyway, getting back to the um, talent skirt thing here. Let me go back. Yeah, this is uh, this is supposedly from both your yeah, American and European people. Let's have a little palate cleanser though, while we're uh, thinking about it, because we don't want to mix our glorious spring bank with the uh, palate skirt. Hopefully they don't clash. I don't think they will. I've got a little sea salt chip here, basic to uh, kind of clean it. Clean it all off. A hillbilly one. I need 17 steps to hit 1,000. Wow. Lucky you. <laughs> I'm way far away from that. It's hard to eat in front of you guys, by the way, but it's a necessary evil. Yeah, what's your support? Um, I've only got like 181, I think, at this point. But I've not. Uh, I gotta get better about uh, promotions and linking with Facebook and all that kind of stuff. But um, it's just hard to get time. I, half the time I'm usually doing sample trading or um, just going getting new in bottles and actually experiencing the whiskey and stuff. And this is kind of just for fun on the side. But uh, hopefully someday I'll get be able to get to a thousand. That would be awesome. Hey, Cato, thanks so much for stopping by, my friend. I appreciate it. Uh, Ryan says just finishing a cast strength uh, spring bank. 10 huh is that the 12 i think you mean the 12 because cast strength uh, spring banks usually are 12. uh they could have the 10 is it independent bottling i'm just curious uh, i'm not in kentucky you know i'm originally from louisville originally uh, i was there for 20 years and i moved away to oklahoma city for a little bit for about three or four years they store for miracle online back in the 90s um i'm in it and uh came out here followed a girl out here to dc uh, didn't end up marrying her, but married someone else and um, moved up to uh, Baltimore for a while. And then now I'm in Severna Park, Maryland. So Maryland is where uh, the Casa is. <laughs> I've been all over pretty much. Two hours of drinking, my son says, I'm cookie crisp. Uh, you're never too cooked crispy, man. Come on. <laughs> tell, Bob, tell me you're getting your second wind. You can hang out a little longer, man. We got the, get, just say, give me fifteen minutes. Well, I'm in Louisville. That's cool. Yeah, that's my my hometown. Um, will always be, you know, a Louisvillean, and I'm saying it right. I know you know who I am. <laughs> the uh, that's good to see you, hillbilly. Uh, yeah, hopefully, if you guys have a chance, uh, give him a few more subscribe uh, subscriptions and get him over his thousand. Because once you get a thousand. The, the magical doors open up, you get your super chats, you get your, uh, you know, people will actually take you a little more seriously with the Patreon stuff, which I set up a long time ago and no one's ever touched it, <laughs> which is pretty sad, but it is what it is. Uh, if it was an older bottling, no longer available, really excellent. Oh, I bet that was damn good, Ron. You're lucky, man. A 10 cast strength would be something else. I wonder what... Do you remember the year on that sucker? Okay, hang on, do another pour. Good job, Bob. Working from home tomorrow. What the hell? Yep, I'm off tomorrow, my friend. So, uh, hell, you know, what the hell? Let's, let's have some Talisker. You need to pour you some Talisker 18, Bob, if you haven't already. Show us, you know, share some notes with me in the uh, in the uh, chat channel. Hey, see you, uh, everyone. Uh, we'll hook up, uh, hopefully get to Jack Rose after work and, and have some drams at some point or uh, – We'll figure out something. You got my phone number. Just give me a call. Let's have a little sniffy. Oh, wow. Definitely different, but not not surprisingly different from that sherry. Definitely a little more uh, oaky goodness going on there. We're going to have a little look-see. <clears throat> I'm going to bring up my original review, which is kind of funny. I was just stating it was same ABV as the 10 year, which is surprising. It's very good, but I do notice, an, but do I notice an eight year difference with the 10? Not so sure. It's a thicker, 
more Cody mouthfeel, a touch spicier, a longer finish. I guess I talked myself into it. I think I'm missing the floral properties, which is not big on my list, but maybe I'll learn to appreciate the aspect more as my palate matures in time. And I think I, I was prophetic about that. I think I, I really did come into come of age and, and can appreciate that more now than I was uh, earlier. What you opening up there, Bob, you got a Talisker 18 you're popping open. I'm just curious. Lonis just opened up his Glengoin cast strength. Oh, it's first Glengoin. Oh, uh, hopefully it's good. Loch Ness. Uh, if it's an NAS, hopefully they gave you a little bit of age in there. Um, but don't, don't go off of just that alone. If, if, even if you don't end up liking it, Try the Glen Goyne 18. It's good stuff. Um, and Kato already says good stuff on the uh, cast strength. I, I got to try that. I haven't seen that around or anything. So let me know what you think, Lagnus, when you sip it. Oh, Bob's still hanging with the Glen Goyne 18. That's cool. All right, let's see what we got here. Huh. You do get pepper on the nose right away. I'd say white pepper is the first note that, that pops in my brain when I um, take a little sniff at the uh, Talos for 18, which is not a bad thing. They are notoriously uh, big on, on white and black pepper. Now, I'm sure it's in there. I don't get as much black pepper on this. I think it's because of maybe the age. Maybe um, it, it's had time to tone down a little bit. You do get a lot of balance between floral and a little bit of herbal, more floral with uh, a really good maritime note. And I, uh, it's reminiscent of an old Pulteney, I think. 17. Similar nose, I think, to that. Really good maritime goodness there. Oh, uh, seashells. Oh, Glenjonic 18, the Allard Ice. I got gotcha. you. Can't go wrong with that, my friend, man. That's a great sherry bomb, I'd say. He's crispy and now cut off. No, don't cut Bob off. Nobody gets to cut Bob off but Bob, I'd say. <laughs> There's some fruit in there. I'm trying to dig out. It's 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 definitely orange, I'd say. Like an orange gumdrop is what I'm getting out of that too. Hmm. There's some spice in there. It's not cinnamon though. It's more of like um maybe a nutmeg. Like an all spice, like a Chinese five spice kind of thing. There's some more citrus in there too. I'm debating on, I know it's oranges, but I'm not sure if it's like a lemon or if it's more of like closer to a pear, but I think it's more of a closer to like um, the lemon orange family, nectarine, tangerine kind of thing. Trying to follow along with my cheap Tosker storm, still good. Hell yeah, man! It's, uh, I think I is that a storm over here. I don't know if I've got to try that yet. That's on my to do list, uh, Moose. Don't definitely don't knock it. Oh, I have done the dark storm, and that even though it's a travel retail exclusive, if you can get your hands on it and order it, it's damn good. And if the storm is anywhere close to the dark storm. They're all good. I have, I've yet to have a bad Talisker. I've heard the 25s iffy on the newer bottlings. My friend Lee, unfortunately, on one of the last chats we had, we were talking about the Talisker 25 and how the 25 was such a letdown lately. Well, he he was like, well, I'm going to prove these bastards wrong. He opened it up. And then he found out he had an earlier bottling of it, which is completely different than the new stuff. So... He was a little pissed at first, but I think he, hopefully he learned to appreciate what he had because I would kill to have a taste of Vitalis for 25. I don't care what year it's from. Um, I'm sure the, the newer ones aren't as good as the older ones, but, you know, uh, Latinus says he had a distiller's edition. Yes, it is damn good. $82 here. 
under 100, which is always good. Reminiscent to me of like a Ardbeg Yugadal. Um, really good notes, a little more sherry chocolatey goodness to me from what I remember. If I'm, I might be mistaken, but I think that's what I got out of it. And I really like that bottle. Um, Bob H, any Glen Livet 18 fans out there, one of my top five. It's interesting that you, pull, you bring it up, Bob, because. Um, Everyone and I were talking earlier. He he works literally like a block away from me, so we're pretty good friends now. Um, he, we were just chatting about Glen Levitt and how uh, some of them were really good. And people unfortunately just think Glen Levitt and instantly think you know maybe not as good. But the eighteen for the price especially is a great eighteen year old whiskey. Um, I think that um, the 18 might be another one that I have to go get myself. I haven't reviewed it, Glen Livet, I don't think. I've had the 12 and the 15 French Oak. Um, I'm sure I've had something else by them, but uh, I think I had an, an Adura, um, a peated Glen Livet of some sort. It wasn't my cup of tea, but the regular stuff I really like. So the 18, I might have to dig out and see if, uh, if I think it's as good as Chris thinks. I'm sorry, everyone thinks. So... Um, I think it'll work pretty well. Eighty dollars, yeah, that's like insane price for a great uh, bottle. Waiting for a good group of guys to hit the Talisker Thirty. Yeah, I I I definitely go in on something with you. We'll have to try to see if we can get a a bit of a, a group. Uh, Maybe to go in on a bottle and share. It's too bad you're in New Jersey, though, man. That's a hell of a drive from Maryland. I just drove up through. Uh, my wife had a cousin had a marriage uh, up in Long Island, North Fork. We went up to near Orient Beach and went to a wedding. Really nice. But the drive up, man, through New Jersey and New York is so brutal. <laughs> we, went, we ended up leaving on a Friday, which is a big mistake. I'll never let, make that mistake again. And then coming in and... Uh, uh, thankfully we left coming back on a Monday that it was easier getting back, but, uh, Oh, we already have the 30 already. <laughs> well, what's this? Uh, uh, yeah, I'll have to, uh, yeah, I'll, if you're inviting Bob, I'll, I'll show up somehow. I'll find a way <laughs> I'll get a plane. <laughs> and yeah, we're welcome to come down here to Savannah park, Maryland and, uh, have a dram too. I've got, a. Uh, a few open bottles here and there that we could probably find something that you uh, that you like. The flight up to Newark probably wouldn't be that bad. I'm not sure how far you away from, you are from Newark, but uh, I think Southwest goes direct from Baltimore to Newark or something like that. I might be thinking of Delta. I've flown through Newark a few times. I think it's a Newark uh, Delta hub or, or a exchange or something. I can't remember, but uh, yeah, it's hard to to get around plane, train, automobile <laughs> around the East Coast. And you do get some like really nice, um, just typical, like typical barley kind of oaky notes in there too, wood grains and sawdust and, hmm. I'm surprised I don't get like any of the peat on the nose, but I'm sure it'll come through on the thing. Uh, 45 minutes from New York, one hour north from. Oh, that's not bad. It's a long way from Colorado, that's for damn sure. But uh, from what Bob's tastes are, he's got good taste in, in scotch. I think it'd be worth a trip if he can get a plane ticket to New York. I'm telling you. <laughs> Clinton Coin is a great distillery. I've never heard a bad expression. Yeah, the only thing I've heard is the tin is a little flat, a little thin, but like I said earlier, it's hard to find, unless you're dealing with Isla Petey Scotch, it's hard to find a tin that's worth a damn, uh, or Campbelltown has some good ones, but um, I have yet, I mean, you know, the Ben Rake tin's okay, um, the Glendronic 8 is awesome, I'm surprised how good it is for what, for, I guess I shouldn't say that, uh, some people just can have a knack for doing great young and old whiskey and some people have a knack for just doing great young whiskey and some people have just a knack for doing you know only the old stuff and unfortunately Glen Goyne, I think once you get past the 12 I think you start actually getting to the good stuff that's just my experience oh Bob I, I work in DC actually uh, I can get there anytime I'm, I'm about a half hour drive basically 
uh, from there. Um, no biggie. I, um, I usually drive and take the metro train into work. Uh, so I'd be happy to, if you're ever in D.C., let me know. i definitely meet you anywhere. Uh, Jack Rose is a good place to go. They have really good drams. Haven't been there yet, but uh, Mark Brodo was telling me how good it was. And they are a uh, Scotch Whiskey Society uh, place, too, I've heard, which I need to get more into and see what that's about. McAllen 10 was in winter. I haven't tried the McAllen 10. I've only had the 12. Um, yeah. I think after the 12 was, I mean, it was good. Um, I gotta try a 10 just to see what it's like. No longer available, unfortunately. <laughs> well, there goes my dream. Uh, maybe I'll find an old bottle somewhere. Sometimes you get lucky with, uh, I found a Lafroy 18 the other day, just two bottles sitting on the shelf and they didn't even know what they had. They were selling it for 80 bucks. And now you get it aftermarket three or $400. So, uh, it never hurts to go out to some of these podunk, you know, or urban places that you normally wouldn't sell high end scotch that might have a bottle or two. Uh, you'd be surprised at what you find sometimes. Anyone know how or why Spring Bank has stopped printing the distillery date on inside of the label? Hmm. Let me take a look and see what you got here. Uh, Mr. Ryan. Um, when you say printing the still date inside the label, are you talking about inside like the back side? Is there like a you know like the, the white part in the back side? Or on the physical label in the back or the physical label in the front itself. I'm curious of which one you mean. Um, on, inside the bottle, I see some etching. Let me see. Uh, let's see if we see anything. 55 milliliters, B5. Uh, what is this? E08. It's got a mark of some sort, 75 centiliters, but hmm. I do see it etching down here, but it's just uh, some dots. It's not an actual date. So I'm trying to find what you mean there, um, Ryan, uh, if they ever did. I'm not sure if I have a bottle that, that has that. Let me know. Let's see what you got here. I like the Green Grant 10. Light, simple, a perfect starter dram. The Green Grant 10. Yeah, it was. I thought it was okay. I, it, it, it's hard for me to get into like a Highlands Bayside kind of uh, one of the lighter ones uh, at a 10 level. But um, it, I definitely wouldn't disagree that it's not bad to to get into like a good starting before you have something else. That's that's true. I'll have to grab a Mac 10 still on the shelves here. Oh, Moose, you lucky bastard. <laughs> Can you send one to Maryland? <laughs> that would be awesome. Lightness just bought a bottle of the Glendronic 8 on your recommendation from Whiskey Fest with Lee G. It was so good. Yeah, I told you. I told you. <laughs> that stuff, man. I, I even wrote on Twitter too, directly to Glendronic, begging them to release that in the United States. They gave me a like, but I don't know if they're even close or thinking about it. But uh, damn, it'd be nice if they released the eight here. I tell you that what, man, I'd, I'd be all over that. Ryan says, looking at the white part on the of the back of the front tab. All right. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. The lighting's not the best in here, but huh, this is probably a newer bottling. I'm not sure why they would stop that. That's a good question, Ryan. Um, hopefully, one of the commenters, even if they're not in the chat, and if, if someone knows after the fact, sometimes I get comments at, on the videos. Hopefully, someone can come by and say why. Um, I am going to send them on Twitter. I'm going to ping Spring Banks Distillery and, and maybe ask them. That's a good question. Um, they do do their own bottling and their own uh, malting and everything there at the distillery. So they should know the reason if they have stopped doing it. Um, that's a good question, though, because I don't see anything on the box um, either. I don't think there's anything, like, mysterious inside of here. Let's take a quick look. Uh, very basic. Um, 
that's cool that they used to put that on there though but uh yeah i'm surprised that they it definitely don't have anything in the white part of this bottle that i could see on the front or the back for that matter but uh huh. our big typically does the etching on the bottom of the bottle um sometimes it's hard to see you gotta take a flashlight to it but uh Whiskey Scout says this is the Mac 10 Fine Oak. Um, I don't think he's talking about the Fine Oak series, but he can correct me on that one. Uh, Ryan says older bottles always had the distilled day. Huh. Maybe um, maybe the, since they've become so popular, this is just a guess, Ryan. The hypothesis would tell me that they're just so popular now that uh, maybe they, they just don't have the the resources to do it even since they do their own bottling and their own uh, malting and and all the whole thing in house maybe it got to the point where it being so popular that it just couldn't that was a part that they cut to save time and money maybe but it's a shame because i do like that aspect to it to know exactly when it was produced because i have no idea what year this is from this could be old as dirt for all i know or it could be brand new um and like you said, unless you got a distill date or a bottling date of some sort, um, or unless someone could tell me exactly what the codes mean of E08 and uh, there's another one. Is it a 33? Yeah, 30 or 85. I'm trying to see 85 on the bottom. Then you have the E08 as well. That might be like a batch barrel bottle number of some sort, but unless you can code it. Let's take a little look, just out of curiosity. Uh, Spring Bank, because sometimes this does, you know, give you more information. Spring Bank uh, bottom bottle, I'm going to say number. See if anything comes up. Uh, not off the top. It's something I will look into though and see if I, I can figure out what those codes mean because they got to mean something. Why would you bother putting, you know, codes in the bottom if it doesn't mean anything? It, it might have, and, and this happens, like Ardbeg changed their uh, whole stamping of the bottle after a certain period of time. Um, Springbank might have put it on the label and then after a while they thought, well, we'll just etch it to the bottom of the bottle in a code and that way people could tell when it where it was from but yet you know it's just etched to the bottle i don't know if that's cheaper to do uh, i wouldn't think it would be but you never know with, with the way they make things nowadays what sometimes things uh make sense and not hey uh, swami good to see you man glad you made it home from the uh route 44 uh sorry route 66 trip i want to say 44 for some reason route 66 trip man that's awesome I wish I could do that. That'd be a hell of a, and it's my country. You know, you think, maybe I should do it in Canada. What's your all's route up there? I can take it from, let's see. I'd love, if I had my way, I would start out in Newfoundland, Labrador. I would go down and make it to Prince Edward Island. I would go across to uh, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, Quebec, Ontario, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta, and then finally British Columbia. And then up, I go to Yukon Territory and over to none of the territory, I think is how you say it, and the Northwest Territories is where I would stop. Is that, I think I covered all the bases with that. <laughs> Trans Canada Highway, that would be awesome, man. I should freaking like, I should do a trip. <laughs> or if I could talk my wife into doing that, that'd be awesome. Route 95 is tough enough, 66 is a long drive. Yeah, 66 is a long drive. Oh my, I've, I've driven part of it in Virginia and that was enough. <laughs> and that's not even counting the historic part that he took from uh, Chicago all the way to California. Jesus, man. Whew, that'd be a hell of a ride. But it'd be fun, man. Especially if you could like do a show all, every time you do a stop. That's freaking awesome. Especially if you can find a good place for scotch <laughs> or if you brought really good bottles with you for the trip. Uh, I got to catch your show out there, Swami. I haven't watched it yet, but I'm going to uh, make the time as soon as I can to uh, 
to do it. Lightness says, uh, you're not American if you if you know that smart fella cheers. <laughs> no, I just do it off. I used to always love geography when I was younger, so I'd memorize. I, I would actually draw Canadian provinces for fun. I'm one of those weird people that would just do crazy stuff like that. <laughs> That's the only reason why I know them all. And plus, I'm a ham radio guy, so I talk to people all over the world for fun. It's like fishing for people. And uh, so I got to memorize all the geograph, uh, geography of all these places. And Whiskey South says he needs to do the 101 Pacific Coast Highway by a bike to Alex. You see my big ass on a bike, man. I'd break that sucker. <laughs> it would be sad. The tires wouldn't make it like 40 feet. <laughs> I'd have to get a plane. <laughs> I want. That's what I want. I want to do the Learjet Scotch Reviews. That would be awesome. I need a Learjet, though. <laughs> Tullex says, any plans to head out to visit Scotch for Dummies gang? Uh, KB and I are looking at October 5th visit for the local whiskey event. It's a tough one, Bob. Um, the reason I say that is because there's three events going on this year, and I'm having a hell of a time trying to pick what to do because I can't do all of them. Um, the, in August, I'm going on vacation in Nima Colon, which is in Pennsylvania. It's a resort. Uh, south of Pittsburgh, really nice place. It's gonna unfortunately cost a, a, a mini fortune for a week there, but um, that's happening the week of the 27th of August. Um, after that, I know that you guys are doing the Vine and Table uh, Whiskey Expo there in Indianapolis on the 5th. There's a get together out in Kansas with the Scotch Test Dummies. That's also, I believe, in October. I can't remember the dates. I think it's like near the later part of the month. That's number two. And then you have the New York City Whiskey Fest on December the 4th. So I think that's the one I would probably try to hit is the New York one. Um, that's, I'm thinking, probably the smartest deal only because... I've already done the Wolfine and Table one in Indianapolis um, last October. It was fun, and it is a lot better even than the D.C.'s uh, Whiskey Expo. The only thing about the Expos that kind of turned me off is when I went out to uh, the one here in D.C., a lot of promises were made. Like LaFroy said, we're going to have our 25, 27, and 30. They only brought the 27. Um, it, things like that just kind of drive me nuts, and the whole way it was – organized and I don't know it's kind of it's kind of iffy on the is it worth 350 bucks for the ticket you know is is a tough one the first one was a lot better I thought than this DC one but hopefully New York will be will be cool I'd like to come out just to meet you guys because uh, it's fun hanging out with uh, those guys I didn't get much of a chance to do it while I was an indie because they were working a lot. So they had me on the show and stuff and it was fun, but um, we were going to, we were talking about getting the, some drams after the show and all that, but everyone was kind of, I think too pooped to uh, do it. But uh, if you guys are around, it might be uh, better worth uh, hanging out, especially since you're not a early uh, to better. <laughs> Moose says Harley. Oh, the big motorcycles telex. Yeah. I'll have to, uh, uh, I'm not sure about that kind of bike, man. I, I, I never, I don't, I don't know. My, my, it's funny. When my mom was, uh, my mom would take me to kindergarten on a motorcycle to school. It was the coolest thing ever. But after that, you know, I never really rode on one other than like a ATV four wheeler kind of thing. So I'm not sure how I'd like that or not. I had to try it out maybe. It's great meeting with you, Swami. A great time. Oh, Scout got to meet Swami on the trip. That's cool. Yeah, come to December 4th. Yeah, Scotch for Dummies are all coming. I think that might be the better time to do it because usually in Indianapolis, they're doing their show. And I'm sure they'll have you guys on, which you'll enjoy that. But uh, as far as the like, actual interaction time and hanging out, it's a little hard to do. Uh, I think there versus New York, I think is going to be. Everyone's coming out and hanging out 
kind of thing. The funny thing is when we did the one in DC, Lee and I and Paul brought bottles. We had better bottles than the people in the freaking expo had, which is kind of sad, but it's true. We had the RBIG 23, the, the Calathine Oak uh, 21. We had um, Brooke Lottie's, uh, uh The Black Arts, of course. Uh, we, ha we had a little everything. It was crazy. Bla the rare cast black and all sorts of stuff. It was really fun. All right, let's get back to this. Uh, did I already drink this? There's no way. I was going to say. <laughs> I'm going to have a little more um, notes on the old Talisker 18 here. Mm. Really nice pepper. Mm. White pepper out the yin-yang. Not so much on the black, but I still get the peat, subtle, a little more citrus flavor. I'm thinking it's um, a really good marriage of lime, orange, lemon. Do I like it better than the 10, though? That's the, that's the tough one, man. I don't know. I think it really depends on my on my mood because this is really nice saltwater maritime goodness going on in here. But hmm. finish two. It's a it's so different than the ten. That's what makes it tough to rate them next to each other. Oh, my. It's a drier finish than the 10. It's definitely drier than the Spring Bank 15. Hmm. Is there, I don't think there is any sherry in this um, 18 at all. I don't talk about a sherry uh, property in here at all that I see. So I'm wondering what's causing the dryness. It's reminiscent of like a Fino sherry in a way without the acidity well, it's got the citrus thing going on, which is acidity, but really nice dark chocolate note. Peanutty, like um, cashew, too. Mm. This might take a little dab of water just to see if I get anything else out of it. Don't tell Mr. Lee he's going to kick my ass. <laughs> That's okay, though. What he doesn't see won't hurt him. He's not here tonight. <laughs> it's a little dab. Not much. Just a little bit dead. Just a little bit dab. Let's see if that um, hopefully doesn't destroy my... It's got good smoke. Good, Really good smoke on it. Hmm. It's got an espresso finish too. It, it, the more I, I'm in getting into it, the more complex it is. So maybe I do enjoy it more than the ten. I mean, I enjoy the ten for the strength of it. The eighteen I enjoy because of the complexity. It's more refined, but it's nothing is strongly assertive in it. So it really is going to depend on what mood you're in for you know ten versus eighteen. Completely different world. Nothing alike. I mean, it, it's funny because, I mean, I can tell it's from the same distillery to a point, but if you blind tested me, I'm not quite sure if I would be able to tell you if I had like six whiskeys and there was a Talisker 10 and 18 in the mix that these are the two from the same distillery. I think that'd be really hard. That's a good challenge, I think, for people uh, that are Talisker fans. I do have an old uh, particular independent bottling of an eight back here I'm going to do, courtesy of Mr. Bobby Parnell. I really appreciate it, my friend. I'll be uh, reviewing that uh, maybe not next week because I just did the 18, but uh, the next Talisker review I do, I'll be sure to try to hook up that uh, the uh, old particular eight version. Uh, Swami says he finds the 15 to be sweetest of the spring banks. Yeah, it, it really is a nice, uh, I like it. I like uh, a sweet dram. So this, at first, I didn't get the 
the difference of the tin versus this without the oxidation. I think oxidation really, 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 really helps that one a lot. Um, you don't need it as much on this Talisker 18. You need time with this guy. So oxygen for this and time with this. That's, I think, the moral of the story for this evening. Mm. I do like it. I have to be I have to be in a certain mood though uh, for Talisker ten versus eighteen, and I, that's well. I think my the mature palette helps is picking out all the nuances of the more delicate flavors of an eighteen, since you know the ten's got really great flavor, of course, but there's only like five or six notes. With the eighteen, you double that, and a little more. Not, not as in your face. So there's more to pick out, more time it takes to do it. Really nice finish with that, almost like a co uh, espresso, I'd say. Not just coffee, but espresso. Mm. And that orange, chocolatey orange, still gumdrop is still there too. Uh, so what... What's your pick between these two, the 15, uh, Spring Bacon, and the Tosker 18? Oh, you're going to do that to me, man. Yes. Oh. Here's the deal. I'm just going to be straight up honest with you. If I'm going for complexity, I'm going for the Tosker 18. If I'm going for, you know, refinement, I'm going for the Tosker 18. If I'm going for... I hate to say better flavor. If I'm going for a little more oomph, a little more, you know, pizzazz, I'm going to go for the 15. It's 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 a little stronger. If I want a little more strength, if I want, um, hmm, if I definitely want a little more funk, you know, I'm going to go with this guy. Oh, my. It's, it's such a tough decision because they're both good in their own right. If I'm gonna let's let's slap a, a figure on it, one to five point two five increments. The fifteen, so damn good. It, it's it's a it, it's hard to, to bring it down below a four in a a four two five. The Talisker eighteen, I'm gonna go four point five. I think it barely edges out the spring bank only because of the complexity and the age. Uh, I hate to say it because that doesn't make or break a whiskey. It really doesn't. But this is a, is a complex bastard. This really is. Uh, I mean, this has got it's, it's, this has got its, you know, it can hold its own. It's, it's got, it's got some complex aspects to it too, but I would rather see a Spring Bake 18 go with a, a Talisker 18. And then I think that would be a, a better, maybe a better matchup. I think this one's just lacking only because of the age, which leads to complexity. That's And that's the difference between the 4.5 and the 4.25, I'd say, on these two guys. If I, if, you know, to ding this one, it's going to be the ABV. 48 would have been better. I like the age statement. Um, I like the distillery. I like the fact that they bottle their own, done this, you know, warehouse deal, the whole, um, everything's in house, the no coloring. I don't think either one of these guys colors. I'd be surprised if they bother because they're both fairly light colored. No chill filtering, I'm sure, on both of these. So they're really close. The only thing that's different is the area, Allen's versus Campbelltown. And the age, 18 versus 15. And I think that's the only reason why this guy is a little more complex than this guy. But if I, and this happens a lot of the time, if I don't want to sit down and take the time it's going to take to get the enjoyment out of this guy, you better damn believe I'm going to sit down with this guy before I'm going to open this guy. So it all depends on how much time you've got and I think how much um, flavor kick ass in the mouth you want to get because this is going to give it to you versus this guy but if you take the time you're definitely going to get more out of this guy than you're going to get out of that guy i hope that makes sense to you um 
it's hard to put them up against each other. I'd love to get my hands on a Spring Bank 18. Swami, if you're still around, uh, was the have you had the Tal Oscar 18? And if you had, what did you think between the Spring Bank 18 and the Tal Oscar 18? I'm just curious if it was really tight. It's hard to pick a, a winner between the two. Because um, I think that's what I would probably I think I have a harder time picking a winner out of these two if the ages were exactly the same. And it was a Spring Bank 18 distillery bottle and a Talisker 18 distillery bottle. No frills, no, you know, independent bottlings, just straight up against it. Could take it in this perfect sense. Thanks, Lockness. I appreciate it, man. I'm going to wait till uh, hope. I'm going to give uh, Swami a, a minute before we jet off into the wild blue yonder here and see what he says. I'm just curious if he has a take on it. Tell us if you had the spring bank cast strength. Yes. The 12 cast strength is damn good. Um, the bones are up there and in the, in the shelf there next to the tin. Um, I didn't enjoy it. it. To me, it did take a little time and water to get it where I really wanted it. Um, if you're the type that doesn't like to take time or add water, you're not going to like it as much. Um, I don't mind taking the time and I don't mind adding a couple drops. So to me, I think it was well worth it. It's a hundred and hundred to hundred and ten dollars. And like I said, it's hard to find uh, like recently, but they are releasing a new batch of it. So don't fret. You'll be able to find it. Um, is it better than the 10? Yeah, I mean, I like it better because it's got the cast strength is a big plus bonus for me because I get exactly the strength I want with a couple of drops of water. And um, I get a couple of extra years in age, so it's hard to, to justify a 12 cast strength not being better than the 10. Um, I don't think there's a big difference between the bourbon cherry uh, casts that are used. I could be wrong. I have to look up the notes and see, but... Uh, I don't think there were a big difference there. Uh, but yeah, I thought it was pretty good. If you're going for uh, the 13, the green, that's a whole different story. That took me some time to warm up to. I didn't like it the first time I drank it. The second or third dram, though, it, it kept warming up to me. And But with the oxidation, it really helped out a lot. And I thought it was really good uh, close toward the end of the bottle I got. So I think it did help. Uh, with that, it's very organic barley, a lot of herbal floral notes with it, um, even more so than anything else Spring Bank's done. So keep that in mind if you ever go for a green bottle, it's it's a bit different. Only Spring Bank I've had spare bottle on the bar as well. Plenty of good stuff on the bar waiting for the right crowd. Wow, man. <laughs> yeah, Bob, that uh, that Spring Bank twelve cast drink. Uh, if you don't mind taking a little time and water, I think you're gonna I think you're gonna like it a lot. I really do. It's it's very well done, and for the price, I think it's a pretty good deal. Uh, I would put it right up against the Arbic Goodall, which is one of my favorites, uh, and it's got an age statement, which is even better. Um, it's strong but assertive in a good way, and um, don't have any right now, but I am going to get me some more. <laughs> as you mention it, and yeah, we'll have to we'll have to organize a little meetup somehow. I'll have to figure out something, Bob. Um, is KB next to you in New Jersey? He probably is. Um, maybe we can do, um, try what's, what's, what's here between Maryland and New Jersey? Is it Pennsylvania? I guess Philadelphia, maybe, maybe we can, um, I'm not sure when, when we could do it. Cause we're already talking about meeting up in New York this year, but, uh, maybe early middle spring next year, maybe we can do, uh, some sort of, um, meet up uh, in Philadelphia or something. Maybe we could do it even beforehand. I mean, that's not a big a trip. That's a, that's a drive trip, but um, maybe, maybe if it's just for like a one night type thing, let a pick a decent uh, hotel or something and uh, bring a few bottles and uh, maybe make a weekend out of it or something. That'd be kind of interesting to try. It's August now, September, October, Hmm. I know you guys are already heading out in October, but maybe. Uh, okay, oh, in New York City. I'm in New Jersey. Twelve four is a great opportunity to meet. Oh yeah, I'm definitely gonna do December. Uh, I was thinking you were talking about meeting up for uh, 
like a you got, uh, at the bar there. I'll have to figure out some way to do that. <laughs> or even if you guys are out in this area too, you're more than welcome to stop by. If not 12-4, we'll work it out. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to plan on, on December the 4th, though, being a... a I think a, a big option to uh, to do because that would be the best out of the three I've been thinking of. Um, the only bad thing is I'll miss I'll miss uh, meeting up with uh, Scotch Test Dummies, but um, I'm sure they'll have another get together at some point, uh, not too far future. Hopefully, uh, I always wanted to go back out to uh, Oklahoma, Kansas area just for a. A visit, so it'd be kind of interesting to do. Katie's farm has an office in DC. Oh, cool! So we can make that work too. Yeah, it'd be cool. Yeah, anytime you guys are in the area, let me know, and I definitely would be uh, up for you guys coming out here or, or meeting uh, somewhere else, whatever you guys feel like doing. So, uh, yeah, just give me a heads up when you're going to be in town, uh, one or both of you, and uh, I'm sure we can. Do maybe even do a little mini show or something on the side if you guys want to. Don't mind being on camera. <laughs> All right, guys, I better I better turn it off here. I appreciate y'all hanging out. And uh, wow, I went way over what I thought I was going to, but it, it's hard not to uh, go over when you've got two really good dreams and uh, good viewership. And please give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and hopefully, I'll be able to do an earlier show. I, I get kind of short into the stick when I started at 11, but uh, I might try to pop a show here and there, maybe on a Saturday or something if I get a, get a chance. Uh, I'm off tomorrow, so you never know. Maybe I'll throw one op uh, an earlier one open. How do I reach you off the live feed? Oh, uh, Telex. That's T-E-L-E-X, as in Tango Echo Lima Echo X-Ray at Outlook.com. Uh, just give me an email and uh, be happy to chat with you. That's uh, Tango Echo Lima Echo X Ray at Outlook.com. All right, guys, have a good one. And um, hopefully, I'll see you on another show soon. Um, thanks so much for Scotch for Dummies for uh, letting me do the after show and giving me uh, some exposure and whatnot. And uh, hopefully, see you guys sooner than next Thursday if I'm lucky. Uh, you never know. Maybe have a surprise show at some point. I've got some, I got some uh, sample things I need to get through. I might maybe do a couple tomorrow during the midday just to get some European maybe uh, viewership going. See you guys later. Slanchava.